So what's going on guys? I appreciate you tuning in to another video. I am really excited about today because it is another butchering day and I'm really excited to bring you guys along. So today I wanna to talk to you guys about how we process birds from pasture to freezer. And I know there's a lot of how-to chicken processing videos. Uh, well, today I'm going to be doing a how we do. This is how we do it. It might not work for you. It might not be. Um, maybe it's maybe it's not even the easiest, the best way to do it. However, this is what works for us um, with the amount of years that we've been doing this. Um, this is what we have come down with and it works for us. Last time we did chickens, uh, we did about 70 birds within three or four hours. I mean, that is unbelievable. That's the fastest we've ever done it. So our system does work. Uh, maybe it, it won't work for you, however, it works for us. The reason why I find this day so important because it is all of your work put together in one day. Um, yes, it's so important how you raise your birds um, you guys seen in the past, you know, we uh, give our birds non-GMO feed. They're obviously on the pasture. They're moved twice a day. They're given fresh water. Uh, they're never out of water. If we mess up today, all of our work to this point has gone out the window and it, it's a shame. So today is probably the most important day in raising your own food because it's, it's what you put into it is what you get out of it and we want to be able to provide the healthiest food for our family and whoever is coming and purchasing our chicken. So the first thing we do actually happened yesterday. I ended up moving them in the morning for the last time and I also removed their feed. Uh, you wanna make sure that they have no feed in the crop or their stomach and they have removed all of their waste through their system. That way, when you're harvesting them or, or, or processing them, uh, there's no waste that gets on your equipment or on the meat. So that is number one and that happens even before today. So before we get too far into today's uh, butchering day, I really want to take the time and show you and tell you, you know, what we do. And I explain that on the pasture. As you guys see, this is a live bird. Uh, we end up um, bleeding them out. I know there's a huge controversy. You know, we're hurting the bird. Um, to be honest, we're not. Uh, so we um, nick their carotid artery. You can find that. I mean, you can find it on us. Here's your jawline, and it's right here. Okay. So it's the same idea on a chicken. Okay. Here's their jawline, and here is their carotid artery. I mean, you can feel that beating, the life that's in this bird right now, beating. Um, and we nick that. And as soon as you nick that, their blood pressure drops and they're out. I mean, they, they obviously um, have nerves. They obviously still move. Uh, so when an outsider sees this, um, they I can understand why people might think we're hurting the birds. And maybe you can't take this step of taking life right now. Um, that's okay. However, I would recommend you guys going to your local farms of where you purchase your food and watch, watch it happen. Um, that, that link between where food comes from and how it gets to your dinner plate um, is, is totally lost. It's real easy to go to a supermarket. Well, maybe not now and everything going on, but you know, get meat from a supermarket and eat it. Like that, where did it come from? Link has totally gone from this country and I think it's starting to come back. I actually know it's starting to come back Especially with the community on YouTube and being able to create videos and show that what we end up doing is putting it upside down and at the bottom of this there's a little hole and That's where the head comes out now. This holds them in place also like you know it like Swaddles them gives them a little bit of comfort uh, that way they are still so you can hit that artery. So as you guys can see the chicken is pretty relaxed in this cone. It's just hanging out right here and this is where we bleed out. I got this bucket so it doesn't go all over the ground. It also helps with easy cleanup and like I said you're gonna find that jawline okay right here 
you're gonna part the feathers and you're just gonna nick the artery. Now one of the most important things is to have a sharp knife because if it's not sharp, that means you're ripping and you want to cut a nice clean cut through that artery. Now once the bird has been harvested, it's time to go over to the scolder. And this is a crucial part because you need it to be perfect in order to get the feathers out. And what I mean by that is the water temperature. And you want that to be around 145 to 150. Uh, that's the temperature that we have found that worked. I know you can go online, they'll give you a few numbers. Um, I've, I've seen 170. Um, I think that's too high because you can potentially start cooking the meat and you definitely don't want to cook the meat. So this part is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you're gonna, you know, dip the bird in the water and you want to keep it moving around. That way the water gets around all the feathers. And again, this helps uh, when it comes to plucking. Now for a gauge to tell you uh, when it's done, the hardest feathers to get off that I feel are the, it's the back shoulders right here. And if you can take those out real nice, that means you got a real nice uh, scold. Once that's done, we come over to the plucker. Now this has absolutely changed the way we process birds and actually the time. Um, imagine just hand plucking this. Just, just sitting here hand plucking the bird. Uh, that would absolutely take forever. Uh, but it's pretty easy. Um, it's just like a mini washing machine and with these plastic fingers. Now you wanna make sure you use water when it's in the plucker. This helps get the feathers out of the machine and off the bird. And it actually helps uh, turn the bird around, get it in different spots. And after a minute or two, your bird is de-feathered. Uh, this has absolutely been amazing. Uh, we ended up attempting to make a whizbang plucker and it did not go well whatsoever. So once we're at this stage, then we move into the processing center. So normally we have this garage door shut. I have it open for some light for the camera. Uh, the first thing you want to make sure you have is a blade that is sharp. Uh, you know, it's really hard when you don't have the proper tool for the job. And this is your number one tool when you're processing chicken. I'm not gonna go into full detail of how to get the organs out um, due to, um, you know, obviously due to what I can show on YouTube. However, I'm gonna show you up into a point of that. Uh, so at first, it's to get these legs off. Now, just like uh, your leg, uh, there's a joint. You wanna get right in between there, preventing uh, your blade from hitting that bone. So it's pretty easy when you find that joint. All you do is hyperextend the leg and you see these two bumps and you cut right in between there. The next thing you gotta do is take the neck and head off. Now what I do is I use gravity to my benefit, sort of let the bird hang and then I cut just right up top of that breast, just like that. Then I expose the rest and I cut around the crop. And again, the crop is where the chicken stores its food, helps grind it down, um, easy to digest. So once I get all that exposed, instead of cutting through the neck with my blade, I get a pair of butchering scissors and I simply just cut the neck right off. So now here comes getting the internal organs out. Now, how I do it, okay, is here your breast, here's the bottom of the stern, sternum. Uh, you know, we have a sternum as well. What I'm gonna do is end up, I push back the skin, I right, pull it back, and I cut right underneath, right underneath that breastbone. And I make a slit, and basically I go up and pull everything out. Now this is a key, you have to pull out everything. You gotta pull out the lungs. You gotta pull out the little piece of windpipe that's gonna, be, that's gonna still there, be there when you pull everything out. It's really important to get those out because it could even rot while it's in the refrigerator or your freezer. And also, you really don't wanna cook those. It really doesn't do anything for the chicken and it could potentially um, completely change the taste of the meat. The one key thing is when you're pulling out your organs. There's an organ that is called the gallbladder. 
Uh, you do not want to nick it. It is green, and if you nick it, some green fluid will go everywhere. And if that's on your meat, you need to get rid of it. You do not want the gallbladder to be cut and get on your meat. That is absolutely awful. Real key thing is also is sanitation. You want to be able to keep a clean area when you're at this stage. I talked about it a little bit in the pasture, but all your work goes out the window if you can't take care of this part of the process. You know, it's awesome that you can raise birds, uh, but if you don't know what to do with them after you're at the point of, uh, you know, butchering them and putting them in your freezer, it, it, you kind of defeats the purpose. The other organs that it's kind of important for you to take out are the kidneys. Now these are very small and they're actually along the back. Uh, they're white, you know, just like any other kidney you would see. Uh, I mean, but they are super small. I mean, it fits on my thumb. That's how small it is. So it's important to find those as well and get those out. So there's a lung. Uh, these go along the rib cage. So, and it's pretty easy to take out. There's a tool you can get or you can just use your, your fingers and just scrape them out. And here is that small little windpipe that I was talking about. Um, it's important to get this out. This one's actually a little bit longer uh, than normal. However, you gotta get this out or it could be bad for your meat. And there you have it. There is your finished bird ready to go in the ice chest. Um, now this is an important, important stage because you wanna cool down that meat pretty quickly. Uh, you don't want your meat to just um, sit there because technically, I know, I, just, I know this might not sound um, right or make sense, but it's, it's, your, your meat is hot. It technically could start cooking. Um, like, not like full, like you're cooking it on a grill. However, like if you would leave a deer or even like a cow hanging and in its, in its hide or, or, or skin, it could actually start cooking that meat. So you wanna get that temperature down really quick. Um, feel free to leave comments on that. I know people might be like, what are you talking about start cooking? Um, it's true. Uh, you, if you don't cool your meat down, it could affect the quality of your meat. So the second part of today's vlog, I really wanna show you guys how uh, we break down the bird into individual parts um, for ourselves and customers. Now, you know, this could be many different ways. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of people have requested um, a, f a few different things. What we've come across with is your normal cuts, your breasts, your wings, your legs. Now, legs could also be broken down into thighs and your drumsticks. Uh, the other things that we have seen are half birds, uh, meaning they basically want, like basically what it is, the bird cut right in half, and you would do that, but you would follow uh, the sternum, and then you would just use a pair of scissors and cut right through it. And then you would also then cut out the spine. Um, that is a very easy way to do it. And the other thing I have seen are people want bone breasts, bone, bone in breasts. And to do that, all you would have to do is remove the, the two legs, the two wings, and then you would cut. You would see the, you would just cut along that breast line right there. And you just leave that intact on the rib cage. And the real good thing about that is, you know, for one, it's a little bit easier for us, but two, for the customer, you get a lot more meat. When you fillet a breast off the rib cage, you do leave behind meat. And then that's why people use the carcasses uh, for stock and, or stew and, or whatnot. Uh, but for this case, for this purpose of this video, I'm just gonna break it down into very simple cuts. Um, so let's just get started. So the first things first, you wanna just make sure you got all the pin feathers out. Now the plucker does an amazing job doing that. However, you do gotta check the armpits and sometimes I would call the ankles of the chicken. Now what I do, I usually start by using gravity. I just take off the leg and you can see right where you need to with that skin. Now to pop the leg off, all you do is just pop the bone 
right out of it, right out of its socket. And then you see the line you need to take, and it's right there. And again, you want a real sharp knife, and you don't want your blade or your edge to hit bone because that's when you dull your knife. And then you go in between those bones, and there you have one of your legs. And then you do the exact same thing on the other side. You know, separate it, cut that skin. You're gonna pop that right out. Again, you got your line right here. And follow it right in between the socket and the bone. And then there you go, there's your other leg. Next thing I do is I'll end up popping out the two wings. And now here, this is the spinal cord. And here are like the shoulders, all right? So this is, so you wanna do, get right in between the neck and the shoulder. And you gotta think about it as a little round ball. And how you do that, you pop that out right there. And you get in between, again, in between those joints. Here's your wing. And we'll go with the second one. It's the same thing. You see, here's the neck right there. Here's that shoulder. I'm gonna get right in there. Scoop around. I like to, I like to just pop it right out. And then you get it right back like that. And then that way too, you're not losing your breast. Uh, because if you have a lot of orders or you, you, you like your breast meat, um, sometimes the wing takes your breast meat. So again, it's not wrong, it's just what you want as a final product. Uh, so for the breast, very easy. Um, for obviously if you want skin on, you wouldn't take it off. But, but in this case, we're gonna peel back the skin. We put that in the skin pile. And look at these, look at those two nice breasts. And now if I wanted these to be bone in, and you know what, actually I'll show you that right now. To keep, to keep the, the rib cage on your breast, there's another line. You're, again, you're just following your lines right here. Here's the socket for your wing, he, and here is another line of where your breast it ends. You're gonna end up taking a pair of scissors and just cutting right there and then you're gonna cut above that joint underneath the breast. You're gonna cut through that bone. And then you'll do the same thing on the other side. Find your line, go right in there. And you're just gonna cut it like that. And then you'll trim off some of those, some of that little blood right there, trim off. But then there you have your breasts with the bone in it and then you have your your backbone your spinal cord I mean and you can also then use this for stock as well so here's your breasts with the rib cages now say you don't want that say you know a lot of people um, you know they just like to just be able to have their breasts for certain recipes how do you get that off well Basically, you're gonna fillet that right off of the rib cage. And you're gonna fall, first cut is you're gonna follow the sternum like that. Follow the sternum right down. And then you, then you can see, you'll have your breast, and then right underneath that is your tenderloin, right here. So look at that, right here. Here's your breast, and right underneath here is your tenderloin. So then what you're gonna do though, is you want, right there, see how that's one piece? There's this little muscle group right here, right here, that connects your breasts to the sternum. You kinda wanna separate that. And then, you just, look at it, you, you just peel it right off. You just follow that muscle group, and then finish it by using your knife, nice clean cut right off there. So then there's your breast. So then let's get that tenderloin. You're just gonna fillet this right off the rib cage. Again, this is why you want a sharp knife. See how that is right there? Boom. 
There is your tenderloin. And we'll do the same thing. You're gonna fall on the other side of the sternum. Like that. Just peel that back a little. There you go. Here's that muscle right there. I'll try to get it to you. There's a little muscle right here that connects the sternum and you can actually see it right there to the breast. You're actually just gonna, you either can cut it. Cut it would be the more better way, the best way. And it just peels right back. And then you're gonna take that nice clean cut there right off there's your second breast you can trim you can trim all that that up and then we'll go for this other tenderloin flay that right off and there you go guys you get your two legs try to get everything on camera here you got your two wings your two breasts your two tenderloins now you have your rib cage and then you have your spinal cord and the other half of your rib cage. Now you can use these for um, stock, stew, you know, you could boil these up and then pick everything off for some chicken salad. Um, that is probably the easiest way I could show you how to quarter up a chicken. Now the last thing I need to show you guys is our food vac. And what we have here is the vac packet. This thing has absolutely changed how we package our chicken and actually all of our meat that we process. Uh, we, uh, last year we pro processed our pigs with Life on Beagle Road. Uh, this thing is absolutely amazing and it's really simple to use. Um, right here we have four chicken breasts. All in here nicely. Basically just put that here. And I'll put this package right, right on this bar. There's a bar right here, and this seals everything together, or seals the plastic. What you do is push it down, and then you can walk away, and it seals it, and it takes all that air right out. Well guys, I really appreciate you tuning in to this video. I really hope you guys learned something and could take something away and implement it on how you guys process your birds. We have been doing this for nine years. Um, it hasn't come easy. We've had a lot of failures, and a lot of hand plucking. So guys, don't be hard on yourselves when you guys first start raising your own birds. Um, it is a learning curve and it's really fun and once you get it dialed in, it's really amazing. Uh, don't be afraid to leave some comments down below if you have any questions or maybe you just have an extra tip for me. You know, I this we're always learning and we're always improving and that's most important throughout life. Well guys, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch our lives. Uh, this was really fun to make. Um, if you haven't, please hit that subscribe button. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up and don't be afraid to leave some comments. And again, I will see you on the next video.